I want to go full square into this question about the role of journalism in a complex modern democratic society. Okay. That's what we want to deal with today. This question, what are journalists for? I want to spend a fair amount of time thinking through this question. What are journalists for? Right. We've been saying in our discussion about democracy, references to freedom of expression, references to the role of journalism, we've been saying that journalism in a complex modern democratic society does have a special role. We've been saying over and over again that the business of journalism is not like the business of selling shoes. Shoes are important, but shoes are not central to the maintenance of democracy. Journalism, we're arguing, has a special status. Journalists do something that is not just fun and entertaining, but is important to the maintenance of a healthy democratic culture. Journalists will argue over and over again that they do have a special status. And what is that? We have to think through that, because journalism does a lot of things. Journalism gives you the sports scores from yesterday, yes? If you pick up the, the newspaper, you'll read about sports, correct? Is reporting the sports scores central to the maintenance of a healthy democratic society? No, I mean, you, you may or may not care about the sports scores, but it's hard to argue that knowing who won the game last night is central to democracy. <laughs> Journalism also provides the comics. Uh, advice columns, recipes, is all of that central to journalism's mission in a democratic society? Well, no. Those may be parts of the paper you enjoy, that's fine, but journalism isn't going to be able to make a claim that it has a special status in society based on its ability to entertain, amuse you. Lots of things can do that. You can be entertained and amused in many ways that have nothing to do with democracy. So when we talk about journalism's special status, when we talk about the answer to this question, what are journalists for, we've got to go beyond that and ask what is the core mission of journalism in a democratic society. Now, there are different levels at which you can answer that, and people will offer different answers. So what I want to do is go through a few of these. Answers to the question, what are journalists for, from a variety of different people, both contemporary in the United States and throughout history and around the world. So, let's start with the basics. The kind of statement that you would find is going to be hard to argue with. Very few people would argue with this statement from Bill Kovach, who is a former newspaper editor, co-author of an important book called The Elements of Journalism widely used as a text in many journalism classes. So Bill Kovich, he's right from the center of American journalism. He's been the editor of a major paper, in this case the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He's maintained a position as a well-regarded thinker about journalism, author of books that people take seriously. Bill Kovich says the journalist's role is to inform the public about issues so people can make the right decisions for their lives. Hard to argue with that, yes? Pretty straightforward. What's the role of journalism? What are journalists for? Well, they're supposed to inform the public so that people can make decisions. Not hard to understand what he's saying here. Over and over again in this class, we've mentioned that in a large, complex society like the United States, no one person can acquire the information necessary to be an informed citizen on one's own. None of us have the time or the expertise to go collect all of the information we would need to be citizens. It, there's simply too many things. If you had to, on your own, every day, wake up and do your own investigation into foreign policy, domestic policy, if you had to figure out the tax code, and understand the role of the United States in the world. If you had to do that every morning, wake up, you'd go crazy. You wouldn't be able to do it. So journalism helps us. It informs us <coughs> about the issues that are relevant to us. And it does that because we live in a democratic society in which we believe people should participate in governance, making decisions. 
So this statement is very straightforward, hard to argue with. But because it's very straightforward, hard to argue with, rather superficial, it's also not that interesting. Okay. So let's move on a bit. Here's another journalist, Amira Haas, interesting journalist for the Israeli newspaper Haaretz. She covers the Palestinian territories. Uh, very provocative writer, very well regarded, not only in Israel but around the world. Amira Haas says it very bluntly, the purpose of journalism is to monitor, monitor the centers of power. So I'm sure Amira Haas would agree with Bill Kovic's statement, yes, we're supposed to provide information so people can make decisions, but the, the core mission of journalism, Haas is saying, is to monitor the centers of power because what we really need from journalists is help in watching the people with power because the people with power so often abuse that power. If you have a society in which there are concentrations of power, monitoring that power is important. You've all heard the truism that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. There's entrenched in almost every society a fear of concentrated power. And one of the roles of journalism that most people would agree about is a special task of journalism. It's not just to inform people about issues, kind of broadly, but to especially keep an eye on the centers of power. <clears throat> now that leads to a question, well, where, where are the centers of power? If, once you start down this road, lots of other questions come up. Well, one center of power, obviously, is the government. The government holds power. Another center of power, clearly, in our culture is corporations. Huge multinational corporations, billions of dollars of assets. They make decisions that affect millions of lives. Right. So another, again, a, a fairly common assertion you will hear that part of the special role of journalism is to monitor the centers of power, but once you start talking about where that power is and how to monitor it, then things might get tricky. All right. <clears throat> I want to shift a bit to a focus not only on what journalists should be writing about, but to whom should they be writing. This is a quote from an article by Jack Fuller, who used to be publisher of the Chicago Tribune, another major American newspaper. All right. So what does Fuller say? He says, the social mission of journalism is intensely practical, to educate people about matters that are important to the community's well-being. It's just another way of saying what we heard from Kovac. Okay. But he goes on, if journalism is to fulfill its social mission, it, much, it must reach beyond the high, small, highly educated, usually well-to-do audience of political and social elites. It must engage large numbers of people. Today, that means winning a battle for attention more fiercely competitive than any that our species has ever known. Very dramatic there. But I think part of what he's saying is hard to argue with. If we're going to educate, provide information to the public about issues and have a positive role on fostering democracy, that information can't go, just go out to a small, relatively well-educated elite but that information has to circulate in the broad public. If we are going to try to maximize the participation of ordinary people in democracy, going back to that notion of popular democracy, which Fuller seems to be endorsing, media can't be happy with circulating only among the relatively affluent, the relatively educated, the elite. So journalism has to think about how to get its message out there. And he's highlighting a problem with that. We live in a very competitive media market in which journalism has to compete not only with other journalists but with reality television, a spectacle entertainment system, and a world in which there are more and more ways for you to distract yourselves without actually learning anything. So, <coughs> Fuller is highlighting some specific problems that journalists face. Let's go to another focus on to whom journalists should be speaking. This comes from 
Noam Chomsky, who's known both as an academic, he's a linguist whose interventions into our understanding of human language were extremely important in shaping the field of linguistics over the last 50 years. He's also a political dissident and a critic. This quote comes from, his, from one of his books called Powers and Prospects. And he's talking, he uses the term writer, the responsibility of the writer. But I think we can substitute journalist. And Chomsky says the responsibility of the writer as a moral agent is to try to bring the truth about matters of human significance to an audience that can do something about them. Okay. So again, kind of echoing Fuller, that we want to make sure that we are writing about matters that do matter, matters of human significance. Okay. Not simply the trivial, the entertaining, the amusing, but matters of human significance. And Chomsky is highlighting the moral responsibility to bring those matters to the attention of an audience and can do something about them. Now, people might have different opinions about what that audience is. From Chomsky's point of view, again, anchored in a conception of popular democracy, Chomsky would say the people who can do something about them are, in fact, ordinary people, not the elites. Some journalists will tell you that they believe it's most important for the politically active, the elite, to be informed. But Chomsky would argue just the opposite, that it's ordinary people who need that information so that they can act on their own behalf. Notice also Chomsky inserts the term moral agent. He wants to highlight the role of writers, journalists, as moral agents, as having to make a moral decision about who they are, especially in relationship to systems of power. So again, what we're doing is throwing out different ways people have talked about the role of journalists, the, the way different people will answer this question, what are journalists for? Not because there's one obvious and easy answer, but because we want to spark your thinking. I want to stimulate your minds to start thinking about what you believe journalists should be doing in the culture. Maybe that's because you're considering a career in journalism and you want to start thinking about what kind of journalist you are going to be. Maybe it's simply because as a citizen you want to think about what kind of journalism you need and what you should expect from journalists. All right, one more. Let's go now to a different direction. Mahatma Gandhi, Mohandas Gandhi, you know him, yes? One of the iconic figures in the 20th century, leader of the Indian independence movement. Right. A tragic figure assassinated in his own country after India finally won independence. Gandhi, very, very well-known figure, known mostly as a political organizer and activist. When you think about Gandhi, you think about his role in the freedom struggle, in the triumph of the Indian population over the British colonial rule. But Gandhi filled a lot of different roles. He was not simply the leader of the movement. Early in his life, he was also a journalist. Trained as a lawyer, Gandhi also engaged in journalism. He published a small newspaper. You may remember in the movie A Tribe of His Own, P. Sinoth referring to the importance of journalism in the freedom struggle, pointing out that many of the most important people in that freedom struggle at one point, worked as journalists. In Gandhi's case, a journalist for a small circulation publication. Gandhi wasn't writing for the big newspapers. But another important lesson that Sinoth referred to, that small circulation publications that articulate important ideas at the right time can have a high impact. Gandhi's journalism. Gandhi is not known mostly as a journalist, but his journalism did have uh, quite an influence. In Gandhi's book, Hind Swaraj, which translates basically to Home Rule, an early book in which he makes the case for independence from Britain, he makes the case for the Indian people to rise up and throw off the British colonial rule. In that book, he talks about 
journalism, newspapers, the primary form of journalism at that day, of course. And he says, one of the objects of a newspaper is to understand the popular, popular feeling and to give expression to it. Another is to arouse among the people certain desirable sentiments. And third is fearlessly to expose popular defects. Hmm, that's interesting. Gandhi's challenging us to think here about journalism as not simply a kind of conduit for information that people need. Gandhi's arguing that journalists have to take more responsibility for their role in society. Gandhi's arguing for a different conception of journalism here. Let's go through the three points. He's saying one of the objects of a newspaper is to understand the popular feeling and to give expression to it. So he's saying journalists should go out and figure out what people think, what's on the minds of people, and express that. Right. That newspapers, journalism, is a vehicle for, in a sense, helping people understand themselves and each other by reporting on popular feeling. That is what the people think and feel. But he doesn't stop there. He doesn't say the role of journalism is just to go out and report on what people are saying, thinking, feeling. He says another <clears throat> object is for to arouse among the people certain desirable sentiments. Well, now he's not saying report on the world. He's saying bring to people information that will lead them to certain what he calls desirable sentiments. That is, he's suggesting that one of the roles of journalism is to help shape public opinion. Not simply to report on it, but to help shape it. And third, he says, is to fearlessly expose popular defects, to help people understand what's wrong with the way they're thinking. So Gandhi is suggesting journalism has a much more complex role than simply reporting reality back to people. <coughs> He's saying that's part of it, Rep that, that journalists should go out and, and give voice to what the people are thinking. But he said, Journalists should also take responsibility for shaping that public conversation, that public dialogue, that public opinion, and also not be afraid to, in a sense, tell people when they are wrong. Okay. That's a very different conception of journalism than we typically hear, see in the United States. We're going to talk more about that over the next few days. Okay, last. I want to end with a quote from Karl Marx. We're, we're doing a wide survey here, contemporary, historical, American, and otherwise, Karl Marx. Now, of course, Marx is known most for the Communist Manifesto, Das Kapital, for his work on political economy. A lot of people don't know that Marx was also a journalist. Marx worked as a journalist to make a living and keep himself afloat. He worked for a variety of newspapers in Germany and England. And in a letter that he wrote to a friend when he was quite young in 1843, Marx was reflecting on what they should be doing. As young people caught up in an age, a spirit of social change, political turmoil, there was a lot of discussion about what, what is our role, what should we be doing. That Marx right here is not talking specifically about journalism, but I think the sentiments here are worth contemplating. So Marx says, if we have no business with the construction of the future or with organizing it for all time. So Marx is saying, listen, we're not here to, to plan the future and figure out how the rest of human history is going to play out. We, he, he was smart enough to know he's not smart enough to do that. Nobody can do that. Nobody can sit down and plot the future of human society. So he says, if we have no business with pretending to be a lot smarter than we are, there can still be no doubt about the task confronting us at present. He said, we may not be able to see the future, to plan the future, to know everything, but he said, we can look at the present and understand what we face. The task confronting us at present, he says, is the ruthless criticism of the existing order. 
ruthless in that it will shrink neither from its own discoveries nor from conflict with the powers that be. One could argue that's not a bad summary of the obligation of journalists as well. Ruthless criticism. Now by ruthless criticism he doesn't mean violent ruthless criticism. He's talking about a kind of intellectual ruthlessness, an intellectual harshness in which you do not turn away from reality. To engage in that kind of ruthless criticism doesn't mean you're going to look at your opponents and criticize them ruthlessly, unfairly. What he's talking about is a kind of harsh intellectual honesty aimed at the existing order. But the task is to look at the way power and wealth are distributed today and ask those difficult questions, engage in that ruthless criticism. And he says that ruthlessness is going to lead to two things that are hard. One, the latter, is conflict with the powers that be. That's inevitable. If you look at the existed, existing distribution of wealth and power, and you are critical of it, that will put you in some state of conflict with the people who hold that power. That's almost a truism. How could it not be otherwise? We're seeing that play out all over the world today. There's a concentration of wealth and power in Libya, in the government around Muammar Gaddafi. The people of Libya are rising up. They are challenging the powers that be. Muammar Gaddafi is not saying, oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were unhappy. Here are the keys to the palace. Oh, and said, jet fighters strafing the population, apparently. In Egypt, right, people standing up to the powers that be, in that case, the reaction less violent, but still, the powers that be do not give up power typically without a struggle. So Marx is saying if you are going to engage in this kind of intellectually honest, rigorous, ruthless criticism, it will put you in conflict with the powers that be. Get used to it. That's, that's your fate if you choose this path. But he also says, ruthless in that it will shrink not from its own discoveries. What does he mean by that? Here's what I think he means. He said, if you engage in intellectually honest criticism, you not only might come to conclusions about the illegitimacy of power, you might find out things about yourself you don't like. Not just about you personally, but about your society, your culture. Right? Ruthless criticism of the existing order, ruthless in that it will shrink neither from its own discoveries nor from conflict with the powers that be. Sometimes when you look honestly and ruthlessly at reality, it not only puts you in tension with power, it puts you in tension with other people, with friends. It makes it difficult to know exactly what the right answer is. It makes you self-critical. It makes you doubt yourself. I think what Marx is talking about is an application of that intellectual rigor across the board. It's always easy to apply that kind of intellectual rigor against your opponents, against people you don't like. It's always easy to be critical of people you already dislike. Okay? If you want me to point out the many flaws of the administration of the University of Texas at Austin, I can do that easily, very concisely and very insightfully, I might argue. If you want me to point out all of the things that are wrong with those folks up in the tower, Ah, that's easy. It's a little more difficult to be critically self-reflective and start pointing out what's wrong with faculty, not one I don't like so much, or what's wrong specifically with faculty in the School of Journalism, or maybe even what's wrong specifically with me as a faculty member. That kind of criticism, that self-criticism, is not so easy, and it is in fact common for people to shrink from their own discoveries. How many people have you known or how many times have you come up against a cold hard reality that's the product of your ruthless criticism and it's a cold hard reality you don't much like? Happens all the time. Human beings are capable 
quite easily of displacing that kind of responsibility. And if you are going to argue you've never done that, then you're lying, because everybody has. Everybody at some point has shrunk from their own discoveries. And the question is, can we collectively build a culture in which we can, in a sense, support each other in that kind of ruthless criticism? And you might say that journalism is a special case of that attempt. That journalism, when it works, builds a culture within journalism in which that ruthless criticism is possible. That ruthless criticism not only of the powers that be, but of all of us and the entire culture. <coughs> all right, again, these answers to the question, what are journalists for? No one of them is definitive. No one of them can simply be accepted. You should be thinking for yourself about what you believe to be the core mission of journalism in a democratic culture, what you believe to be most important. <coughs>